All right, good morning. Um, well, there's been a lot of folks uh, purchasing some small 10 watt mobile radios. And they, it's basically the same radio, but it goes under a couple of different names. I'll uh, post up here and show you what those radios look like and what their name is. Okay, so what I was looking for was something in the same price range, but maybe had a little bit more power, <laughs> if that's possible. So I found this guy on eBay, and uh, it was about $119 <clears throat> delivered. You can find it a little bit cheaper. You can find it a little bit more expensive. Uh, I kind of picked the one that was kind of right in the middle, and because uh, I was lazy, I didn't want to dig around. So I paid about $119 for this guy. So it's not real bad now. Do I have any expectation that this radio will work as good as my Kenwood? The This is a TM V71A. This is a workhorse Kenwood radio. And I have no expectations whatsoever that this will work as good as the Kenwood. What I'm hoping is that it will work acceptably well. <laughs> I mean, you definitely get your money's worth. So let's see what we get for 110 bucks. This is a QYT TK8900 mobile radio. All right, so let's open this guy up. And let's see what we got here. Unpacking inspection equipment. It says we should have a machine, a microphone mount, bracket power cables, and screws, and maybe it looks like an extra fuse. Instruction manual. Well, it's backwards right that's backwards we don't read from that way <laughs> we, we restart over here and go that way uh, it looks like it's um, mostly English I'll get in I'll give you a review on the manual a little bit later but let's look at the radio now it does have a Kenwood uh, style microphone jack and you can interchange this microphone with a Kenwood microphone if you don't like the quality of this. And that, that's from what I can tell on the 10 watt rigs, the big difference uh, is in the quality of the microphone. So we may, we may look at this very closely. All right, so what do we got here? Well, there's a microphone mounting bracket, big deal, right? Screws and a fuse, big deal, right? Okay, there's a bracket. Now, I've seen some of these things that had pretty cheap brackets. Didn't want to come out of there. And that's actually a that's actually a nice metal bracket. So that I think that'll work well. Let's see. Looks like the power cord's underneath here. There it is. All right. So that's all that's in the box. And it comes, looks like it comes with a, a cigarette lighter adapter, a little funky Molex plug. Now I'm going to power it up because I just happen to have one of these. I planned ahead. <laughs> so let's look at the actual radio. All right, so here it is. We've got uh, function, call, memory, on, off. Looks like this is uh, VFO memory. I haven't read the book. Uh, exit, probably exiting the memory, and AB, depending on how you want to go to frequencies. And I'm guessing that the FM is to list to FM radio, transmit, and power light. Well, one thing I like about this radio that I don't like about some of the cheap ones is it actually has a real, a real volume control. Uh, some of them are digital, click, click, click. This one has a real volume control. The back, we have our RF connector and an audio out. Um, I'm thinking about putting in this one of my cars with a inexpensive uh, mag mount antenna 
and my car has uh, <clears throat> audio input to the stereo so I won't have to use this little speaker this is a speaker here I can take this out and actually plug it into the car stereo have better audio for me to hear it because I'm half deaf because I'm getting old okay so size wise let's compare it okay here's the the workhorse standard Kenwood so you can see it is a uh, well, there's about a half and there's about a probably another half about a third of the size maybe about half or so of the weight this has got a pretty good size heat sink on it now if we look at the specs and this is the one of the reasons I picked this particular Ray Didio is because of the output power And it says output power, uh, you get VHF, UHF. So on VHF, output power is 25 watts. UHF output power is 20 watts. This is the specific reason I bought this one over the other ones that I showed you at the beginning of the video, because they are 10 watts tops. All right, so let me hook this up to power here and see if I can... Uh, Give it a quick smoke check. And I'm not going to be doing any transmitting. I'm just going to power it up just so you can see. Let me uh, just make this connection first. And we plug this into our AC or uh, cigarette lighter adapter. Let's go. Whoa, baby. Straight on to power scared the crap out of me okay all right <laughs> all right I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit okay so remember this video is in high def so you can go uh, 1080 and full screen to get a really better picture okay so here we get uh, we just turned it on we got a power light and you can see the dual band it's got uh, uh, VHF on the top, UHF on the bottom. Man, that is loud. Let's turn that down. So, what I can tell you is that speaker is <laughs> plenty loud. At least for the beep function, what it sounds like actually receiving a, uh, a signal is a little, you know, we'll have to determine that. And this should be power off. There we go. All right, so my next step is uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, program this thing. That's going to be on another video. This was just kind of an introduction. Uh, I am once I once I uh, show you how to program it. After the programming is done, we'll uh, also hook it up to an antenna and we'll get a, a, a sound check because I'm concerned about the microphone. Okay, that's it for this video. Uh, come back and uh, see part two of how to program this and how good the audio works. And that's it for today. And as always, thumbs up and subscribe.